The story of Our Lady of Guadalupe is the story of interculturation of faith. Because what that story is about is the incarnation of Christ expressed in a culture, in a language, to a people in a way that they can understand. And that was the breakthrough for evangelizing the Americas and uh, the First Nations people of the Americas. She was really Our Lady of the Americas, so in a sense she belongs to all of us in, in that sense. For more than 500 years, devotion to Our Mother of Guadalupe is central to Aboriginal Catholics all over the continent of North America. At the heart of the story is St. Juan Diego, a Mexican Aztec peasant who in 1531, as a new convert to Christianity, was on his way to church one day and found himself suddenly in front of an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She calls him my son. She appears as a Nahuatl woman in their clothing. In other words, she's very recognizable to him. She speaks his language. And she says, where are you going? And he says, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to Mass. She says, I want you to go to the bishop, ask him to build me a church that will honor my son. And he knows the biases, the prejudices of the Europeans toward the Aboriginal people. In the 10 years since the Spanish conquest of Mexico by Hernán Cortés, the missionaries arrived intent upon conversion, not just offering the original peoples a way of becoming Catholic, but Catholic in the European tradition. Then, one year after the establishment of the Diocese of Mexico City in 1530, Our Lady appeared to Juan Diego. When he asks her who she is, she says, I am the Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, Holy Mother of God. This is a Nahuatl woman, Nahuatl language, Nahuatl body. So this whole, whole context of this is like saying, this is the birth of Christ in the Aboriginal communities. Diego told his story to the new Archbishop of Mexico City, who then asked Diego to ask for a miraculous sign. The Virgin told Juan Diego to gather some flowers from the top of Tepeyac Hill. There, in the middle of winter, on barren ground, Juan found roses, which at the time only grew in Spain. The Virgin herself arranged them in his tilma, or peasant cloak. When Juan Diego opened his cloak in front of the archbishop, the flowers tumbled out, and in their place was an image of the Virgin, as she had appeared to Juan, imprinted on the fabric of his cloak. The bishop falls to his knees asking forgiveness for not having listened to the message Juan had brought, because he recognized these truths that Juan was bringing, the truths that are present in the Nahuatl understanding of God, in the Aboriginal way of life. The church Our Lady asked Juan for was indeed built in Tepeyac, and today the Basilica of Guadalupe is a place of pilgrimage. In fact, with several million visitors a year, it ranks among the world's top pilgrimage sites for all Catholics, but especially for Aboriginal Catholics. Some years ago, I had the privilege to go to Mexico City and uh, visit the, uh, the Shrine of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And I must admit, it was a very moving time uh, just to see the amount of people that are there, the crowds of people, and uh, then to, to get on that little uh, moving sidewalk and pass in front of the image of the tilma that Juan Diego wore 500 years ago, more than that, and that it's still there. It survived all these years, and the, the image of Our Lady that's on it, it was a powerful experience for me, and certainly carries with it uh, an affirmation of the whole effort of the Church today to allow or to invite 
interculturation to happen in terms of First Nations spirituality and culture and First Nations people expressing their Catholic faith in their own cultural way. Canonized by Pope John Paul II as a saint in 2002, Juan Diego, along with his beloved Mother of Guadalupe, has provided a sign that Christianity indeed held out a new path for North America's indigenous peoples, and that they in turn would feel encouraged through Juan's personal story and through the indigenous way that Our Lady appeared to him to make their part of the church in North America true to their cultural traditions. I had a kind of transformational experience about church there in Guadalupe that has changed my life, changed my prayer, my way of living. And it was the fact that through the environment that was there, this one church that's magnificent but it's falling apart and doesn't suit the environment, but it's these living native people who will honor her son. That's the church she's talking about.